I'm going to talk a little bit today about the life cycles of websites. I, I know that there's a lot of these different software or system development cycles that exist out online. Um, not online, but have been studied in various classes, and they're all very similar. Um, they tend to start with some kind of analysis, planning, um, designing what that looks like, developing it out, testing it, deploying it, fixing it, looking for more new problems, you know, retiring old stuff, and then looping back around and finding what other requirements might be needed as time goes on, right? And so today I want to talk a little bit about this website development cycle. Very similar, um, but let's go into depth on each one of these in a, in a little bit more than we have. So let's say I have um, an idea for a website, right? I want to launch some app that goes out and does something I don't know what it is, but um, really I need to start at the conceptualization phase where I'm going to determine um, a lot of things, right? First off, I want to determine um, what are the goals? What do I want this thing to do? How many people, you know, are going to visit it? Um, you know, just kind of what that business plan might look like, um, things like that, really what I need. Um, from there, we move on the analysis um, phase, right? And analysis, um, we start looking at high-level functionality requirements. Okay, in order to accomplish this idea I have in the conceptualization phase, I need to have um, this, you know, I need it to do this and I need it to do that. Really, you're focusing on what is it going to do, not necessarily how is it going to do it. You're going to start thinking about what kind of content requirements are going to be needed. I'm going to need the pages to have this, this, and this. And it's a good idea at this point to start doing a competitive analysis where you're looking at your competitors to see what they're doing. Because if they're not doing it, you need to determine why are they not doing it. Because that often is a big red flag on, you know, maybe they tried it and failed and, you know, they failed. Why? You know, um, because it's really important if, if you're going to fail, I'd w it's way better, way more important to realize that early on and not head that direction than not. Like I have a lot of people, they'll go in, they'll, they don't even know totally what they want this website to look like, but they're willing to dump like two, three thousand into it. And then once they get the website, they realize they're not actually going to make any money on it. And so it's not going to come back to them and they ended up just kind of wasting that money. So it's important to analyze that early on and figure out that cost benefit analysis and if it's really worth the time. So once you've gathered your big plans, what you want to do, and you've analyzed and kind of figured out all the details, you can start defining what that solution looks like through a design, right? And as far as the website goes, we can go in and start, you know, making wireframes. In a previous video, we did that. Um, we talked about building mockups and getting content and you know documenting what that's gonna the, be and and even creating a prototype a prototype might like look like something like this this is adobe xd which we often use to create these prototypes where you can hit play and each screen turns into an app just like you would on your phone and you can click on things and they'll go to other pages and an act just like a website um, or an app but there's it's not actually functioning right and so once we have these prototypes and we're feeling good about everything, we move on to that production, okay? We go through and we, we get the tools we need to build that app or build that website and actually create that thing that we've set out to do, all right? Now, just because we built it and we hired somebody to do it or you built it yourself or whatever, doesn't mean it's gonna be fully functional. And at that point, you really need to test and start figuring out what problems might come up. You know, is this gonna look good on all different browsers? Is it fast enough? Is everything optimized? You know, little things like that. So go through, there's a lot of best practices checklists. I know we've talked in previous videos. Go through, make sure it works good, but you know, test it. At launch, you know, this is where you need your client to sign off on everything. Um, you need to make sure they're, they're good with it. Um, and things get approved. Um, actually, one step in testing I didn't talk about, you probably need to be looking at uh, usability testing. 
Usability testing is where you determine what the goals are of the website and you go through and you, you kind of create a test for users to go through and, and see if they can do those things. And then you evaluate what problems they might run into um, as they do it. So you can see here, um, create a plan, you know, recruit users, um, figure out what the objectives or goals are and a way that you're going to track that. Are you going to write that down? Are you going to have something tracking to see if they click on something? And then you want to say, okay, I want everybody to go out and maybe if we're doing Dixie, apply to, you know, apply for graduation or something. And then we'd look at users and see how they go about um, reaching that goal, right? And so we want to observe them, look for any problems that might come up, identify potential solutions we could implement, and then we talk to the users after on the test. And then we analyze all that data. We want to look at um, their user behavior, how they did it, um, look at the user click path, you know, how did they go about reaching that, and, you know, and, and identifying problems in order to get to that. And then um, really the point is to identify what problems they might run up against and then make it easier for them to accomplish those goals, right? So again, that's part of that testing. Um, we launch it. Um, we make little fixes as they come up that we may not have caught in the usability testing or the user testing. And we fix those. And then as time goes on, you'll find that things get old, right? Um, we've talked about Moore's Law before. And in Moore's Law, you know, technology doubles every 18 months to two years, right? Well, I also find with websites and a lot of technologies in general, you know, new things need to be launched. Um, you know, things get outdated. And, and really, we should be looking and evaluating for those opportunities. And when we see those opportunities come up, we can, you know, identify them and move back up in that conceptualization, right? Now, this is a great cycle. We just continue moving through um, as we launch new things. We look for new things we can fix. And then we, you know, uh, design them and implement them and test them and, and continue around. We find um, there are other types of testing and methodologies we can use to launch our products. And, and I've got a few here today. Um, first might just be prototyping. You can see how we determine the objectives and we develop and we refine and we demonstrate and we continue around until we're confident with that prototype and then we test it and implement it and send it out, right? We have this spiral nav you know, methodology of of evalu or analysis, analyzing, you know, evaluating, developing, and planning, and then we analyze, and it's kind of very similar to what we were just looking at. We have the waterfall method where you define the requirements, and before you really start into the design of, you've got to have these, and then, you know, once you've got the designs down, you implement, and you verify or test, and then, you know, you you know maintain, kind of similar to what we were doing, but you do them one at a time in order to return to an end goal. Um, there's another one out there that most businesses tend to focus on, and that's your agile methodology. And rather than doing the whole thing at in one piece, we break it up into sprints, meaning if we had an app to launch, we would do it in small increments. We would maybe have a feature we want to push out. Well, rather than launching with all the features, we'll launch with just one rather than everything. And we break that up into little segments as we develop these new features or things we want to add into it. And we call them sprints. And a sprint might be two weeks long, and each person's going to have their own sprint. And, you know, somebody's going to um, go do this, another person's going to do that. And at the end of two weeks, we'll put it together and have something that we can push out, right? And in each sprint, um, we're going to plan what that looks like and design out um, different parts and build them and test them and review them and then launch that out and then, you know, get that out in front of users. They're going to find a lot of problems. We're going to find a lot of problems and we'll do that again and we'll, you know, fix those or launch a new little thing. And so this is what we call the agile methodology. Lots of approaches um, to how we build websites, how we build apps, how we build these um, applications. And I hope that this is just kind of a little bit of a glimpse in what that looks like as we, we go out and, and do more, um, you know, with this.